I'm really excited to show you this renovation. The transformation is like night and day. The home originally was dark and dated. There were doors that didn't need to be there. The openings were curved, which again lended to that dated feel. Now I like to start in the kitchen and my client wanted a palette of blues, grays, and cool whites. So I selected a cool white cabinet, kept the style very simple, a little bit more of an updated a shaker door, and also added one of my favorites, lots of pot drawers. You can get a lot of stuff in pot drawers. Now a tip is, when you have a smaller kitchen, to try and keep your finishes very similar. So I use the same counter, both on the island and on the perimeter cabinetry. But the island itself is painted a gray, which again is one of the colors my client really liked. Now, if you want to keep things simple, don't use a backsplash in terms of tiles. Instead, use the same material as your counter. And again, it keeps a very fluid, very beautiful feel to your space. Now, one of the challenges of this kitchen was there was radiator positioned right here. It was really awkward, and my client wanted an island. So we actually did a floor heater just underneath the island itself. So she's got the island she needs, and she could even swap in some little bar stools if she needs to. Now, if you have a small kitchen and you want to give the illusion of a bigger one, and you have a dining room area, consider bringing the cabinetry from the kitchen area over into this area. You get extra cabinetry. You also get a little servery, so you get lots of storage. And we even made room for some beautiful decorative glass area so that she could store some collectibles. Now, one really great tip is we did a beautiful light that you simply touch the cabinet and it comes on. So it's a wonderful touch to this pretty space. That is such a cool light. I mean, given that you're using sharp knives and hot liquids in a kitchen, adequate lighting is paramount, but it should also be pretty. So that's why, Suzanne, we're going to talk a little bit about how to make it gorgeous, how to layer it, and how to do it the right way. Yeah, some, a few rules. A few rules. Yeah, a few rules. So let's start with this picture. Okay. And this is um, a beautiful kitchen. Yes. And this is a great example of layered lighting. Of layered lighting. So absolutely you need to think about having some recessed pot lights in your ceiling. That's kind of a given because you want overall lighting in the kitchen. But then you can think about the other areas. So what I love about that kitchen is that first of all they have the strip lighting running underneath the, ah. the little shelf there. So what's good about that is that it will put um, lighting where you're cooking. So you yes. can see things really clearly. Lighting for underneath cabinets has come a long way. It used to be those little puck lights. Now you can do these nice LED strip lights that give you nice continual light. And actually Ikea has put out these amazingly thin ones. Lovely. Look how thin they are. Because they used to be like pretty bulky and you'd have to build a box around them so mm -hmm. that you wouldn't see them. And these just go right underneath your cabinet. You don't need to do any extra construction work around them. So I love these. Gorgeous. And you can run them in a row and get a pretty continual light. Nice. Um, the other thing in that uh, kitchen that you saw is there's that big arm light, right? Mm. Mm. which is kind of a fun feature. It's like turning your art, your light into a piece of art and you can direct it anywhere where you need. So it's sort of like a spotlight in the kitchen. And who and would have thought of doing that in the kitchen? It's like it's task lighting in yes. a way that you would use for a desk or yeah. a bedside table, but that's beautiful in the So kitchen. it's thinking beyond just the utility and making it into a big artful statement. Yes. The other thing was that big brass pendant mm -hmm. that you saw. So what you might not know in that kitchen is that the island's massive. It's like a 20 foot long island. Wow. And so one half of it is dedicated to dining. So there's stools where you can pull up. So that light is specifically for shining light where you're eating. Yeah. Um, so it's just thinking about all your different functions. Yeah. Yeah. And while we're talking about pendants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have this great one from Ikea. Yes. Um, so one of the things that I find people get really confused about are is how high the pendant should be from your counter. Yes. I get people emailing me that on the weekends constantly while they're putting up their lights. Yeah. And they get confused. So we're going to tell you. Um, so here's an example of it being, it's rigged up here. Way so too I think, high. are most people doing it too high, do you think? I think most people do it too so high. So it's sort of like art, isn't it? Yeah. We're we, hanging our art really high, we're putting our lights really yeah. high. Art always is too high. Oh, art's yeah. too high. So it needs to be, it, art should be eye level. This shouldn't be eye level, but it needs no. to be uh, a little bit lower than a, this. A lot lower than that. Can you drop it down? Yeah. There we go. So the main thing is, and I'm going to get up my tape measure, because there is an average. I think yeah. you're going too low, babe. Okay. okay. Go a little bit higher, uh, can you? So it's around 30 inches. That's about 30 inches right there. You can have some flexibility within that. Okay. Um, what you have to think about is the scale of the light, because yes. it does change a little bit on the size of the light, how it will shine down, because when it's higher up, it's going to probably cast more lighting um, spread out over your island. And you want to create as much lighting over your island as possible. That's right. But the number one thing you have to think about 
are the people seating. Right. So it's not about the standing people, it's about the people sitting at the island that they can see across to the cook. Okay. Um, and that they don't have a light fixture in their face. Yes. Because you want to create fun conversation at the dinner party. That's right. And the other thing is you don't want to see up inside here. So it's a fine line of finding that balance of you don't want to see your light bulb, but you don't want to see that fixture in your face. Okay, right? so that was what, 30 inches you said? About, yeah, it's between about that. 28 and 34, that's the range I would okay. say. And so I find 30 is the sweet spot. Yes. Yes. A little bit like a centerpiece as well. Yes. So you don't want that big centerpiece. That's, you know, the blockage between the conversation happening. Yeah. So this but is But you really always good. have to eyeball it. But I you will, have to eyeball yeah, it. Like you, you do. You have, you have to, to sit there out. with your electrician, stand back, look at it, see how it feels in the whole room as yes. well. Yes. And yeah. be there when the electrician is putting it yeah. in, please. Yeah, I've made that mistake before. Yeah. Don't go out and do some don't spa go out treatments. Now. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's true. Um, let's take a look at, like, like, this would be a great example of one pendant. We want to show you two pendants yes. uh, hanging down from an yeah. island. So you can see what that might look like. We have a diagram right yes. now that shows yes. that. So when you have two pendants, you have to think about, again, getting that equal spacing of lighting over your counter. So you sort of mark your center mark on the counter, as you can see in that plan. And then you space the light, the first light, between that center point and the edge. And you do the same thing on the other side, so you get completely equal spacing on the lights. Again, okay. looking at, if you saw in that plan, we had drawn on sort of the cone of light, yeah. looking at that. And you can really imagine how the light's gonna fall if you look at the shape of your light fixture. Okay, good yeah. to know. Also, size is important as well. Size yeah. matters when it comes to those pendants. Absolutely. I feel like mine are a little small now. Well, like, I wish we'd gone bigger. Oh, I love them big. So we've got two pendants I'm gonna invite in here. We've got a lo <laughs> our lovely- Otherwise known as Karen Jack. Our lovely assistant. Our blondes, our blondes. Okay, so I'm gonna say, start in the middle, Jackie, and then you guys sort of start at the edge, right? So you okay. can see automatically that this is gonna be a problem because the light that's coming down from this light is gonna go on the floor. So mm. you want it over the island. So I'm gonna tell you, shift in a little bit, Karen, and then you shift in a little bit, Tracy. Maybe a little more that way. A little, it's like this, right? A little bit that, a little bit that. Right. That's good, right there. And so you're gonna get equal spacing of light uh, distributed over your island, and it'll look graphic and nice. Okay. Not this so, height, though. Not this height. <laughs> we would have to Back be taller, to the other height. Yeah. way yeah. taller than this. Yeah. Um, what's cool about this is you can almost see the relationship between the lighting and the person sitting there. Yes. And, and, and that's sort of what you have to eyeball and feel out. And you also have to look at size again. So yeah. maybe if they were smaller, they might be closer they together. They might be closer bigger they might yep. be farther apart yes right exactly beautiful little lesson there i <laughs> love you, it ladies. great job pendants